some people achieve fame and fortune by acting in movies or recording music. That's what Paul John Knowles wanted, but 46 years ago, he became infamous for a much more gruesome legacy. On tonight's Criminal History, Chelsea Bynfor looks back at the Casanova Killer and an old case file that documents the deaths of two Central Georgia victims. He crisscrossed the country. Well, he killed, he killed people all over the place. It was unreal. We knew he was a white male, approximately six foot tall, reddish hair. When you think of Paul John Knowles, I just think of pure evil. Connecticut, Texas, Nevada, Florida, Georgia. Five states where investigators can confirm that Paul John Knowles shot, strangled, and stabbed at least 14 women and four men in 1974. There's no telling how many people he really killed. A 28-year-old man from Orlando, Florida, described as smart and charming. He traveled across the U.S. stealing cars and credit cards. But Knowles always circled back to Macon, where there was at least one woman he had no intention of killing, his girlfriend, Jackie Knight. It was an embarrassment to me and my family that I could have been so naive to to have gotten involved in someone like this. Knight and her children were spared, but other Central Georgians weren't as lucky. Carswell Carr was stabbed, I would say probably 25 times. Retired Milledgeville police officer James Josie remembers a bloody scene on the north side of town, where Noel stabbed a man and strangled his 15-year-old daughter inside their own home. And about 70 miles away in Hawkinsville, Noel struck again. Now this is sleepy little old Hawkinsville. Not L.A. or Chicago or... In 1974, Andy Hill's father was the sheriff of Pulaski County. There's pages and pages of them. That's where Knowles handcuffed a Florida State trooper and a Delaware businessman to a tree and shot them. He always described it as the worst thing he had ever been a part of. Shortly after those shootings, Knowles ran into a traffic stop in Henry County, wrecked his car, and then ran into some woods. A civilian held him at gunpoint until law enforcement took PJK into custody and to the federal courthouse in Macon. He was kind of basking in the fact that he was getting all this attention. It was here that a federal judge learned Knowles had recorded audio tapes describing who, where, and how he had killed over a dozen victims. He wanted a book written, that he wanted a movie done, and that the proceeds be split with his mother and father. Eventually, U.S. Marshals brought the tapes up from Miami to Macon, but they were never played in court or made into a movie. That's because a GBI agent shot Knowles just weeks after his capture, after the serial killer tried grabbing an officer's gun. His lawyers and several people always said that uh, that they don't believe that that's what happened. They think that he was, they took him out and executed him. Either way, that was the end of Paul John Knowles. Nearly 20 cases have been closed, but some investigators think many more could still be unsolved. But I would say that there are a number of victims out there that we don't know who they are or where they are. To see more stories on our coverage of the Knowles case over the years, you can find this story on 13WMAZ.com. You'll also find links to extensive coverage, including a 45-minute long documentary with commentary from Knowles' brother and a woman who escaped death. You can also find more information about what happened to those audio tapes in recent years.